Hello there, dear friends, and welcome once again to the Relaxed Fantasy Review. Today, we're going to be diving into a class that is beloved by most D&D players, one of the most interesting and debatably powerful classes in the game, the Warlock. Their packed magic gives them spell slots to recharge on a short rest, and their Eldritch Invocations, which is what we're going to be talking about today, give them spells and spell-like effects which no one else gets to have. They also have some powerful subclasses between the Hexblades and the Genie Warlocks and the Fiend Warlocks. Lots to pick from. But today we're diving specifically into Eldritch Invocations. Eldritch Invocations are a list of powers that you can choose, and they're effectively gifts from your patrons. These powers have a big old choice, big selection of them. Uh, everything from the Player's Handbook to Xanathar's Guide to Tasha's Cauldron had extra invocations for the Warlock to choose from. Starting at level 2, Warlocks get these. You get two straight away. And then every two or three levels, you get another one, all the way up to eight by the end of the game. I have filter these down, and I've created a top ten list, as you've no doubt seen in the title of the video, of Eldritch Invocations that are specifically low level. These are ones that I recommend players take right from the beginning. There's a lot of ones that come later on that have level restrictions, and can be 5th level, ninth level, 15th level invocations that you don't get until mid or high levels of play. But these have no such restriction. You can take them straight away from level 2. But honestly, most of these are useful throughout the game, all the way till the end of your career. So, the top 10 Eldritch invocations. Before we get into it, though, I'd like to let you know, Relax Fantasy Review has memberships. Uh, if you click below the video, there's a join button down there uh, for just a dollar a month. You can support me here on YouTube. You get a little badge next to your name in the comments, letting me know that you're a supporter and earning you my undying gratitude. But whether or not you can do that, thanks for watching and thanks for supporting me here on YouTube. Top 10 Eldritch Invocations. Starting at the bottom of the list, number 10, I've given it to Beast Speech. This allows you to cast Speak with Animals at will. So you can, like you're casting a cantrip, cast a leveled spell. You're going to see several of these on this list. Speak with Animals is a fun utility-based cantrip, which does exactly what it says on the tin. It allows you to speak with beasts. And, um, yeah, they don't have to know a language. They can just talk. It's how you talk to the squirrels, the cats, the dogs, the horses... Any animals you run into in your adventures, um, by speaking with them, you can try and persuade them, you can try to get them to clue you in about information or guide you places. There's a lot you can get from talking to the animals, and uh, I think that being able to do it without casting one of your valuable spell slots, very, very handy. <clears throat> Next up, number nine is Eldritch Sight. Another one that gives you a free spell, this one gives you Detect Magic. Detect Magic is a wonderful spell, which lets you uh, see the aura of magic. So you know if a spell is in effect, or if a magic item is around. Um, and most people will use this in investigations and to find magical traps, but it costs a spell slot normally. Not for a warlock. Warlocks can just turn it on at will and just detect magic wherever they want to. It makes them great investigators and great at sniffing out magical things. So, good, good spell for Eldritch, uh, for Eldritch invocations. Eldritch Sight. But, moving on to number eight on the list, Misty Visions. Misty Visions gives you the Silent Image spell, which is... Kind of like the slightly better version of Minor Illusion. It allows you to create images that, uh, you know, allow their illusions. They, you create illusions that look real, they're like holograms, 
And normally this takes a spell slot as well as material components, but Misty Visions just lets you do it at will, like a cantrip with nothing else required, just cast the spell, create the illusions. Minor Illusion is one of the best cantrips in the game, and it's reasonably limited. It, you know, you've got your five foot cube area, and you can only create a static image, it only lasts a minute. So, uh, Misty Visions and Silent Image gives you much more freedom in how you make your illusions, and honestly, I think a lot of folks who play D&D 5e overuse Minor Illusion, unless they have a really strict DM. A lot of people stretch the boundaries of that spell. Silent Image is what they really want. Now, moving on to number seven on the list, Fiendish Vigor. The spell this gives you is False Life. False Life is a spell that you can cast which gives you temporary hit points. And it doesn't give you a lot. I think it's a D4 plus your spellcasting modifier. So for a low-level Warlock, that would probably be like five or six temporary hit points. But the thing is, is that you can cast it at will. So before any fight, you can just top yourself off with five temporary hit points or so. And then in a fight, it makes you significantly tankier. And considering the fact that it doesn't take material components anymore either, you can just do it at will, and it, because it takes an action to cast, it's not something you can do in combat to give yourself infinite hit points, but because you don't have to use material components, it means that even if you're stripped bare of your armor and your spellcasting focuses, you can still make yourself a little tougher. I put it to you like this. Imagine for a moment you're a prisoner. You've been taken prisoners by some bandits, and they've been given instructions not to kill you, but to rough you up a little bit. So they're going to stand around you, and every turn they're just going to be punching you. That means they're going to be doing one damage plus their strength modifier, so probably you know three or four damage. But every turn, you can just cast Fiendish Vigor. You don't need to focus or anything. You can just do it even if you're tied up, as long as they haven't gagged you. And yeah, you can just keep topping off your tankiness, making it so that the damage they're doing is far reduced, if anything at all. Obviously, that's one very specific situation, but a lot of folks will take feats to give themselves temporary hit points and other, other abilities, and Fiendish Vigor just says, nah, I got it, and you just give it to yourself like that. So, top marks for Fiendish Vigor. Then, finally, uh, my last spell, free spell invocation at number six, Mask of Many Faces. This is one of my favorites, because it lets you cast Disguise Self at will. Disguise Self is one of those first level spells that loads of people like to take, because it lets you transform yourself uh, as an illusion to look like someone else. It lets you change your racial appearance, your height, your gender, anything about yourself that is appearance-based. And you mix something like this with the actor feat or something like that, and, or high marks and persuasion deception, and you've got yourself one of the best infiltration tools in the game. And that's just the normal disguise self spell. Having Mask of Many Faces means you can do it over and over and over again. You don't have to wait the hour to get the most out of your spell slot. You could change your form on a whim with an action, just, I want to look like someone else. And you walk around a corner, change again. You can switch it up as many times as you like. That is a lot of power. And it's one of those deals that genuinely, I think, you can't overestimate how good it is. And that's why it is... Of the 10 on this list, it's the number one when it comes to leveled spells that you can cast for free, like cantrips. So, Mask of Many Faces goes in number six. But my top five aren't actually spells, at least not exactly. Um, they are abilities that improve your warlock in a way that a single spell just can't match. Number five, for example, is Improved Packed Weapon. This is one that came out of Xanathar's Guide to Everything and is perfect with a hex blade or any Packed of the Blade because you have to be Packed of the Blade in order to take this. It's Packed Restricted, but not Level Restricted, thankfully. 
what that technically means is that you have to be level three to take it because you need to have a pact. But that's the only restriction. So you can take it straight away at level three if you want. What it means is that Pact of the Blade lets you summon weapons. It lets you summon a weapon out of thin air that, uh, you know, you can wield. But it's restricted to melee weapons. And they're just regular weapons. They don't have any other particular magical powers. Hexblades have their own power where they can use their charisma modifier to attack, but that's the Hex Warrior traits. That's not Pact of the Blade. Improved Pact Weapon gives your summoned weapons a bit more power. First of all, it makes them plus one weapons. So you already have a magic weapon at your beck and call that can take any form, really, uh, straight away at level three. So that's nice. You also can transform them into range weapons. See, normally pack weapons are restricted to blades and melee weapons. Improved pack weapon lets you grab bows and crossbows. Short bow, long bow, crossbow, heavy crossbow, no hand crossbows, unfortunately, which is a little bit of a shame, but whatever. And finally, the summoned weapon can act as a spell casting focus, and that's important. One of the unfortunate things about Hexblades is that if they want to use their spells, they have to sheath their weapons and grab their spellcasting focus. Or dual wield spellcasting focus and sword, which takes the, their ability to wield a shield away. Improved Pack Weapon says, don't worry about it. You can cast spells through your weapon, just like you had the Warcaster feat. Nice. And you can keep your shield on you, improving your defensibility and making a Warlock much better at long-range attacks if they want to use weapons and a feat like Sharpshooter, or if they want to wield a shield and still cast their spells. And a plus one weapon is just great. So Improved Pack Weapon, number five. Jumping to a different pact, we have the Book of Arcane Secrets. This is one that requires you take Pact of the Tome. So once again, you have to be level 3 technically to get it, although it's not level bound per se. This grants you an additional section in your Book of Shadows, which is something you got from Pact of the Tome anyway. What it does is it gives you ritual casting. One of the toughest things about being a warlock is that although your spell slots come back on a short rest, you still only have two of them for the first half of the game. One at level one, and two until you get to like level nine or ten. So you've got a long time before you're going to have the ability to cast multiple leveled spells without taking a short rest. Ritual casting is a wonderful way around that, where you can spend extra time to cast a spell that's a ritual spell. And... That's cool and all, but it also lets you pick ritual spells from any spell class. And this gives you a little hack. One of the other packs you can choose is Pact of the, of the Chain, which lets you cast Find Familiar and gives you some powerful familiars, like they have invisibility powers and stuff. Um, because normally warlocks don't have Find Familiar on their spell list. Well, Find Familiar is a ritual spell. So yes, if you really want an invisible familiar, Pack to the Chain is better. But if you just wanted a familiar, a normal familiar, you can still take Pact of the Tome, grab the extra, extra cantrips, and then your ritual spell that you choose can be Find Familiar. So now you can ritual cast Find Familiar anyway, without Pact to the Chain. And then you can grab other ritual spells if you want to identify or detect magic or anything like that. As you level up, you can grab Liam and Tiny Hut. You can grab Water Breathing. Like, there's a lot of spells that you can cast as rituals that save you from having to spend your spell slots. And it can't be understated how powerful this is, especially for a warlock who has so limited uh, magical resources. So... Yeah, Book of Ancient Secrets, number four on my invocation list. And the top um, pact-based uh, power that you can get. Now, number three on my invocation list, my, my third one, uh, is one that pretty much every warlock takes. It's one of those that if you don't take this, you are hampering your warlock's power. It's simple...
and the only prerequisite is that you must have Eldritch Blast, and that invocation is Agonizing Blast. One of the things about spellcasters is that their spells are potent, but eventually they run out of spell slots and have to fall back on their cantrips. This is no different for warlocks, they spend most of their time Eldritch Blasting, or using some other cantrip. Which means that they are rolling dice, just like the weapon users are, but they don't get to add their ability modifiers to it. For example, uh, the spell Eldritch Blast does 1d10 damage on a hit, but that's it. So it does between 1 and 10 damage, meaning a beam can just do 1 damage. Um, compare this to a fighter who's wielding a longsword, for example. Yes, they only have a d8 die that they're rolling, but they get to add their strength modifier to the roll to the damage, as long as they're proficient, which they usually are. So that means that even though they can roll between a 1 and an 8, technically the minimum damage they can do is a 1 plus their strength mod, which is probably 3 or better at the low levels, which means the actual minimum they can do is 4, not 1. Agonizing Blast says, don't worry, you're going to be able to keep up with the weapon users now, because you add your Charisma modifier to the damage of Eldritch Blast, which is great, even in a vacuum, if you're just looking at the 1d10. Now it's 1d10 plus 3, which makes it as strong as some of the strongest m melee and martial weapons out there, especially since your Charisma modifier is going to be high. But it gets better as Eldritch Blast scales, because Eldritch Blast doesn't add extra dice like other cantrips do. Firebolt, for example, at level 5, it goes from 1d10 to 2d10, which means if you added your modifier to that, you'd be getting 2d10 plus 4, or whatever, instead of 1d10 plus 4. Agonizing Blast says, no, no, Eldritch Blast splits the damage into multiple beams, and each beam gets an Agonizing Blast boost. So, two beams of Eldritch Blast means you're actually hitting, uh, if your modifier is a plus four, you're actually hitting for 1d10 plus four plus 1d10 plus four. So, 2d10 plus eight. This scales the power of Eldritch Blast as the game goes on in a way that even the weapon users are going to struggle to keep up with and it's just a cantrip and an invocation. That's it. It's the classic warlock damage dealing power. You throw Hex in there, and you are one of the greatest damage dealers in the game at second level. It's really hard to beat. And again, it just keeps going up as time goes on. So anyway, Agonizing Blast, number three, amazing choice. Almost a requirement if you're going to be Eldritch Blasting. So what could possibly beat that? Well... Number two on the list is Devil's Sight. Devil's Sight allows you to see in darkness up to 120 feet, which doesn't seem that special because lots of creatures can do that. Deep Gnomes, Duragar, creatures with extended dark vision can see in the dark. Why is that such a big deal? Because Devil's Sight can see in magical darkness. Magical darkness just blinds creatures. It doesn't matter if you have dark vision or not. The darkness spell, a second level spell, creates a blob of darkness that dark vision can't see through. You need blind sight or true sight to see through it, or devil sight. What this allows you to do is to create pockets of heavy obscurement at very low levels, making it so that most creatures cannot see you, but you can still see them. This gives them disadvantage on their attacks, saves you from a bunch of magical effects that require an enemy to see you, counterspell, for example, and gives you advantage on your Eldritch Blast shots or anything else. Uh, Hexblade with Devil's Sight has advantage on all their weapon attacks as well. So, basically, having a permanent ability to make yourself heavily obscured in any magical darkness... And if you're a creature that doesn't have dark vision, giving yourself dark vision, all of this is just phenomenally powerful. And Devil's Sight is one of the... Basically, there's, there's a feat called um, Eldritch Adept, which allows a person to snatch an invocation, one invocation, if they're not a warlock. 
there are builds out there that optimizers make where they take an entire feat just to get this invocation, which is nuts. Like, that's why it's so good. So, what's number one? Number one is a newer invocation, coming out of Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, Eldritch Mind. Yeah, I mentioned already that people will take a feat to get Devil's Sight, which is true, they often will. But this one actually makes a feat somewhat redundant, and that's even better. See, Eldritch Mind does one thing. It gives you advantage on your concentration checks to maintain concentration on spells. So, constitution saving throws that are specific to spell uh, concentration. This is incredible for two reasons. One, there's a feat out there, Warcaster, that 90% of the reason people take the feat is for this power, advantage on concentration checks. It also lets you reaction attack, opportunity attack with a spell, and uh, cast a spell with a weapon in your hand. But... The main reason people take it is for advantage on their concentration checks. Eldritch Mind says you don't need to take Warcaster. Eldritch Mind's got you. But this is actually even more powerful for a Warlock, because their entire strategy half the time is to throw out a concentration spell. Hunger of Hadar, Hex. Some of the classics are concentration spells. Darkness with Devil's Sight is a concentration spell. Meaning that... If you get hit and drop concentration, your combat tactic has suddenly become much more difficult to pull off, and you've wasted a spell slot, effectively. I mean, sure, you might have gotten some damage out of it, but keeping concentration on your spells is more important for a warlock than almost any other class, because they don't have spell slots to spare. Eldritch Mind says that this warlock is probably not going to drop concentration on their spells, period. And that is invaluable. It frees up a feat slot. And that is something you don't get many of. You only get five in your entire career. Feats, six, I guess, if you want to choose uh, a race that begins with a feat. But in general, it's just five. And only two before the, begin before the halfway point of the game. So if you really wanted good concentration, you'd have to take Warcaster, not with Eldritch Mind. Just use an invocation on it and save your feet for something more powerful and more crucial. That is one of the most valuable things in the game, and that's why Eldritch Mind is so good. Advantage on concentration checks is more valuable for warlocks than anybody else, really, and it gives you effectively a feat slot back. You cannot beat that for an invocation. So yes, these are my recommendations for the top 10 Eldritch Invocations that aren't level-bound. Not really. Um, yeah, taking any of the ones that give you for spells as cantrips is awesome. Taking ones that are tied to a pact or to Eldritch Blast is great. But you can't beat Devil's Sight and Eldritch Mind for my money. For, for, for me, those are almost necessary for half of the Warlock builds out there or more. And yeah, invocations are awesome. I highly recommend checking out the Warlock if you haven't. They're complicated, but the invocations make them so much fun and so customizable too. This has been the Relaxed Fantasy Review. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe down below. Have a look for the join button down there and keep your eyes peeled for more mechanic reviews coming down the line soon. Have a good one, my friends.